well. Okay, shall I start then? I think we're ready now. We're ready. Okay. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for coming. Um, we're so proud to publish Petra Horacek, um, who I believe is one of the great picture book talents working today. Um, gorgeous, gorgeous paintings, amazing colours, uh, quite extraordinary, I think, and picture books full of empathy and heart and life. Um, he has a very special way, I think, of bringing big issues and topics alive for young, uh, young readers and uh, young picture book admirers. Um, we published The Last Tiger first uh, in 2019, um, which I'm sure some of you will know about the meaning of freedom. And that book we'll be publishing in paperback in July 23, just a little advance notice on that. But this evening's about the perfect present uh, with its wonderful, wonderful cover um, about friendship and so much more. I'm really looking forward to hearing what Petra's going to say. Thank you as ever to the wonderful Otterbury Books team, Gail, Judith, Katerina, Tatty, Jade, the team's getting a little bit bigger nowadays, um, and to Andrew Watson particularly, who designed the book, I think very sympathetically, and to Petra's um, lovely agents, um, Phil and Abby. Um, thank you for all you've done too. Um, and most of all, thank you to you, Nikki, for hosting us this evening. We love your events, um, and I can't wait to hear more about Petter's um, process and his art and the way, way the book came about. Um, so over to you, Nikki. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Janetta. Um, I just invite everybody this evening to turn their cameras and their audio off just during the presentation bit, and then we can turn them back on uh, later. So um, let me just um, make our guest nice and large. So there we are, side by side, as if we were in the same room, if only. So it's it's great to uh, be talking to you this evening, Peter. And I would echo what Janetta says about being one of the really true great talents of making books for young children from babies all the way up because we all enjoy your stories. Uh, before we talk about the perfect present, I've got a couple of questions that I'd like to ask you. I remember way, way back when A House for Mouse, wasn't it called your first book? I think so, published. yes. And everybody sort of said, oh, it's a new Eric Carl. Is that, have you kind of seen yourself in that light as well? And what do you think people meant by that? Um, well, hello everybody, and thank you very much for joining us. Um, I, yeah, hello Nikki, it's so, such an honor talking to you. I'm really admiring what you're doing. So it's lovely talking to you. And to the question, yeah, well, I suppose A New House for Mars was the first book where I use collage and uh, sometimes people, mention Eric Carls because I suppose it's the colors it's it's the maybe the collage although I always draw my main characters I don't collage everything uh, but I collage the background and I print and I suppose it could be maybe that which which think uh, you know people think that there are some similarities so. mm. I thought okay. about it more the, the other day and thinking um, it happened to me sometimes that I was thinking about doing a book about, let's say, Ladybird or Chame Chameleon at the time, and I didn't know that Eric Carl actually did a book about Chameleon mm -hmm. or Ladybird. So I, I just thought, is there maybe some way of thinking as well? Maybe. I don't know. I really don't know. Mm. But of so course, I'm a, very happy that, uh, that it's people... It's an interesting mentioned. one. We're <laughs> going to obviously look more at collage in a little while. And maybe it was that at that time when that book was published, which I think is nearly 20 years ago, maybe collage wasn't used that much, um, whereas we do see a little bit more of it now in children's books. But I think there's another similarity too, and I've talked to you about this before, and that is that most of your books um, have animal characters. There aren't that many humans. I know there's a boy and there are grandparents in Elephant, but... In your children's books, there aren't many human characters. Yes. 
Um, I suppose animals giving me more freedom in expression. I'm not limited in any way. You know, you can draw animal walking on all four, so you can draw animal wearing trousers if you want to. It's, uh, and also the facial expression, it's, uh, I think drawing animals gives me more, more freedom, that's for sure. Yes. That's, that's really interesting. So it's the freedom aspect of it, uh, because of course they are surrogate, they're sort of standing in for humans, really. They're not animals being animals, they're animals being humans, aren't they? I suppose, yes, yes. Tell us a little bit about the perfect present. Let's get into this wonderful story. Well, first of all, I'm very grateful to Otto Berry for publishing the book the way how I really wanted to do it. They didn't, you know, um, when I show it around, uh, you know, to my friends or something before, you know, sometimes somebody suggested making more into the story, but I was pretty much sure right from the beginning, I know what I want. I didn't know what I want from the book. And when I show it to Janeta, Janeta Otterbury, she actually understood it straight, straight away. And that made me very happy that she knew what I really want from the book. I wanted a book which, which would inspire to daydreaming, let's say. It should be a book uh, uh, which uh, the reader can um, discuss with, with a child and uh, perhaps made up more games, made up more, more stories from it, you know. Uh, so in this, in this way, it's slightly different from my other picture books, I would think. It's a little bit more open. Uh, it's, uh, it's kind of, I, I wrote somewhere that um, it's a book for daydreamers. You know, it's kind of, uh, yeah, that, that's what I wanted. And hopefully, hopefully it's there. <laughs> Brilliant. I can see that some people are saying they can't actually see you. And I think it's it's not anything to do with Zoom or with us. You need to make sure that your settings on your computer are set so that you can see the same view as me. If you have a look in the top right hand uh, column, uh, top right hand of your screen there do seem to be a little a, a few zoom issues this evening because i notice people do keep getting booted out and having to come back into the room but again that's not something that uh, we can con control at this end so apologies to anybody that that is affecting do you know i think we should get on and hear the story would you like to share that with us i will i will do my best <laughs> okay i'm going to read the book I'm going to disappear because then we can see the book properly. Okay. Well, here we go with the starting with the end paper. Tom and Maud were best friends. Today was Tom and Maud's birthday. This is your present, said Tom. What is it? asked Maud. It's a feather, said Tom. I think it could be. Oh, it's exactly, <laughs> sorry. I don't know why it crashed, okay. I think it could be a feather from the most spectacular colorful bird in the world, said Maud. I would give you the bird if I could, said Tom. This is present for you, said Maud. What is it? asked Tom. It's a marble, said Maud. I think it could be the most, uh, I think it could be the smallest planet in the universe, said Tom. I would give you the universe if I could, said Maud. I would give you the ocean if I could, said Tom. With a blue whale, dolphins, a shark, seahorse, starfish, and a sea monster. I love monsters, shouted Maud. And I love di dinosaurs too. I love elephants, said Tom. I would give you an elephant and a tiger, a lion, monkeys and parrots too. I would give you hills, rivers, mountains and forests, said Maud. And I would give you the sun. Look. It's raining, called Tom. Let's go and play outside, said Maud. And they did. They rode a dinosaur. 
floated, floated through the universe and soared through the air like birds. They sailed the seven seas and watched the sharks. Playing in the rain was so much fun. Later, back home, they had a big bubbly bath. And then it was time for a hot drink and the cake. The cake tasted like the best birthday cake in the world. Today was the best day ever, said Maud. Today was the best present in the world, said Tom. The perfect present. Then they both closed their eyes and fell asleep. Okay, Wonderful. I'm sorry I struggled a bit with the... Shall we, shall we leave it there for a minute and come back to the slides in a little while? So if we sure. could take the slides off just for a moment, because I've got a few questions that I um, want to um, ask you uh, about that. So um, you had another book that published earlier this year um, about two bears. And mm -hmm. because I've had recently read that and I came to this story, I was struck by the connections between them. These two characters who look so similar, but are also quite different, you know, the black and the white cat, the black, the, the brown bear and the black bear. And I wondered whether these two stories had come to you at a very similar time. You know what? Uh, yes, I suppose they had to come in similar time. But they definitely came in the same place. <laughs> that I, I will explain. I actually write most of my books in Czech Republic, um, where I go to every autumn, and uh, it's a it's a cottage in the middle of nowhere. And uh, I'm always sure that uh, in October I can I can have two or three weeks off and go there, and uh, I just walk, I paint in the woods, and uh, I write stories. And well, when I'm saying writing stories, I make notes and uh, sometimes I finish, sometimes I don't. Maybe it's just a sketch, but uh, both of the books were written there and uh, I worked with the, with the material later on in England when I came back. So, so yeah, I suppose they would probably happen around the same time. Yes. Yeah. So these two pairs of characters are co totally coincidental that mm -hmm. they happen to come so close to each other you must have been thinking in pairs <laughs> uh, yeah no yeah you you get me with this question but I suppose yes 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 mm -hmm. um tell, tell us a little bit about the, this cottage where you work you've you've talked before about it allowing you a sort of meditative experience uh because you go and you're totally alone you don't take other people with you well uh yes I I go there on my own. Um, the, the, the cottage belonged to my to my best friend. It's it's the let's say summer cottage. Czech people having cottages like that, and uh, uh, they perhaps would pop in at the weekend or something. But most of the time, I'm there on my own with uh, with uh, two cats, which which oh, they're behind two cats. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. One of them is white, the other one is black. So I suppose. God, this is very interesting for me, very therapeutic. I never thought about it. <laughs> yeah, there are two cats, yeah. I guess everybody's seen that one is called Tom and the other is called Mott, which is obviously... Uh -huh. yeah. it, I, did, I didn't get it straight away. I just knew okay. there were two short names. And then afterwards I thought, oh, Tom and Mott, it's the reverse of the yes. other character. <laughs> yes. I was slow to cotton on. The real um, cat, they called uh, Angelina and the other one is Jolly. Oh, really? <laughs> um, take us through, do show, share some of your slides with us. You're going to take us through a little bit of the process. Okay. So I wanted to show the sketchbook. This is how it really happened. I was looking at it. Actually, I took the picture today and I realized I actually put a date there as well. So this is the very first sketch if you are quick you can read my really incredible english which is full of spelling mistakes and bad grammar but it's only for me <laughs> and i don't show it to anybody apart you know today it's the day when when, <laughs> when i do that so this is how how it looked the very first 
sketch. And I look at it today and I realize that actually not much change. I, I really did a very little changes in it at all. What I also thought, uh, you see, these are the, the notes I make. Um, they are hardly recognizable, but uh, for me, that's enough. Um, so here is the Tom and Mott talking about the most beautiful bird in the world. And this is how the final illustration look like. I, uh, if I, I, I always like to think or to mention a picture from, from the book. I would say that every illustrator, every artist would have their own favorite picture in the book. There will be always one picture they would be looking forward to do in the book. And I suppose this was the book I was really looking forward to. Mm. It doesn't mean it's the easiest. It's actually usually the most difficult picture. And I remember changing this picture a couple of times. I would say maybe four or five times. So it took me quite a long time uh, to do this picture. Tell us what, just go back to that one uh -huh. again, Peter. Um, you said it's often the most challenging. Tell us what was challenging about this picture. Well, I thought it would be that easy just to, I wanted to do some bird which will look like a cockerel, perhaps, you know, that's that that's how it looked on the first sketch, just like that. But somehow it didn't fill up the page. And uh, then it was too colorful and, and, and the shape of the bird was getting lost in it. And um, then, yeah, so there were little things like this. Um, obviously, I had to fit the text into the picture as well, but I really wanted to look big. I wanted the perspective to be right and to kind of fill up the page because it's the first picture when, when we kind of, I would say, uh, go into the world of dream, of their imagination, that suddenly the reality expand into something a little bit more epic, uh, mm -hmm. if, if I may say so. So okay. maybe getting all these things into the pictures, uh, Obviously, when you see it, you just think, okay, there is a bird in the page, but uh, I just... No, I definitely <laughs> don't just think there's a bird in It's an amazing composition. And you talked about a chicken, but um, <laughs> I'm seeing firebirds there. I'm seeing peacocks. I'm seeing this kind of mashup yeah. of mythological birds, not just your everyday farmhouse chicken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, and, and I was trying like his legs resting on the on the on the hand of one of these characters, but it really didn't work, and so on. So yeah, little little things which uh, I was trying I was trying to find the pictures uh, which were not right, so I could show it to you, and I would be very happy to do that. Mm. But um, I actually throw everything away. I just. <laughs> So I don't get distracted. If I'm not happy with the picture, I just throw it into the bits. I don't, I don't get cross. I just put it away. <laughs> mm -hmm. So so it you know so I so I don't repeat myself or something. Yeah. Mm. Can I just also while while we're looking at this picture, I notice that you've kind of put the shadow behind the cats there, and I wondered whether collage. Um, if one of the things that you like about it is its dimensionality that it offers as opposed to painting, you know, like the sort of cubist collages where you almost have a depth in them because of the material that you're using, even though at the end of the day, this is printed, so. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, um, you mentioned the new house for mouse and um, I, it, it was a first book, which actually at the time, I actually finished the book using just wax crayon and watercolors, mm. and uh, but I wasn't quite happy with it. And the book was already ready to be printed. And I then called my uh, publisher and asked them to kind of wait and not, you know, get on with the printing. And actually, I changed the book in two weeks' time and did the collage. And um, since then, I, the the reason why I use collage, but it's because it gives me the freedom. I love the freedom of you see, I, I do these two characters and I keep them on the side and then I paint the background and um, I don't I don't get too precious about it. You know, I can print, I can paint, I can I can use any techniques I want. And if it works, great. If not, I will do another one 
and I still have these two main characters, which I'm then finally glue or collage into the into the final work. So I'm not so precious about it, and uh, I love working with these kind of accidents. I suppose lots of people do similar things these days on the computer, but but um, I'm always worried about using computer uh, because because I think I will be clicking forever and deleting things forever until it will become boring. But if you work straight on the paper, um, you know, you work with these kind of accidents which you which you adopt or not, you know, you 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 kind of uh, I, 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 I somehow feel I'm it's more creative really using hands, using fingers, being mucky. Yeah, I hear you do paint with your fingers as well. Yeah, yeah, I use anything really. I, I use uh, lots of lots of different material. I think on this one it's a collage, so so it's acrylic paint. Uh, I print uh, using uh, polystyrene sheets, and I can see in it uh, color pencils and also oil pastels. Mm. So so yeah, and and graphite as well. Anything anything which which is around. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, people listening might not know. I know because you told me in the past that um you you know you experiment with materials and I do remember you telling me how you you know found a pizza base worked really well for printing yes uh, the polystyrene in the pizza bases yes um so you'll use anything that's to hand yes the the the, the polystyrene from pizza bases that was uh, that was uh, yeah I was using it for many years until somebody pointed out that actually I can buy the poly polystyrene sheets <laughs> you know, especially made for it. I thought I, I kind of invented as <laughs> yeah, but but no, you can buy them and uh, they are very useful. Yes, mm. yes. So no more pizza. Uh, I don't yes, like but... pizza anyway, so I was always kind of uh, hoping that somebody will keep giving me these polystyrene sheets. <laughs> but now I can buy them. Uh, yeah, and I don't have to wash them and uh, yeah. Lots of advantage of buying polystyrene sheets. Uh, should we have a look at some more slides? Sure. Oh, sorry, I didn't turn off the sharing. I hope you don't mind. Um, right, here is another picture. This is the sea monster. So this is a thumbnail. Again, this picture I actually changed many, many times, but this is the one I was happy with. So here they're writing the the monster um, again it's printed from polystyrene sheets uh, cut in the beds painted the background collage in um, this is the whale again this is the original original sketch the thumbnail and again this is the final war so as you can see i choose these because they really change hardly they didn't change at all really you, uh, apart from the details, you can see the dolphins and the and the, the sharks and the seahorses in the right corner. And you've painted the whale rather than collaged the whale on there. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. yes. Uh, yeah, some of it it's painted. Um, the reason again, it's because I painted the whale and then I the, then I kind of uh, scribe. Um, the yellow paint over and getting this kind of underwater effect. Mm. Uh, again, I, this one, you know, you have to wash it off. You you let the acrylic dry a little bit, but not completely. Then you then you put a water over it and smudge it down. And uh, to get this kind of underwater effect, it's uh, on the computer. You could probably do it very quickly, but if you do it by hand, you have to prepare yourself to throw away about five six pictures before you get the one you you really want because. Um, you know the accidents um, always don't play the way you want them to. You know, um, mm. so for example, in this case, the text it's in the yellow bit, but if it's slightly darker than you want, you have to start again because the text won't be visible. So these are little technical things you have to prepare yourself uh, for, and uh, yeah, and be so patient. I'm just, look, I'm just looking at the way you've done the light here, and. Um, so you've painted your background, you've painted your whale, but then you paint over the top of the whale, do you? Because you've got some of it on the top as well yes. as behind. Yes. So in this case, I would I would paint the whale first. Then I will paint around it this kind of lemon yellow uh, everywhere. Mm. And then I would paint where the light is going with the 
with the green, like oxy, oxy, oxidized green. And uh, then I will start washing it. And when it's properly set up, then I will put a turquoise blue over and again, wash it again. So wow. it was like three layers. Mm. But the, the veil is there all the way, all the time. So mm. if it's washed somewhere, not the way how I want it, then I have to start again. And uh, then the final touches with white or whatever color is there, and it's a little fiddly. And I just so it looks, it. these pictures look, uh, they are done in one go, but they're not. It, it, it's a little bit, um, you know, uh, it's, it's, it, it yeah. takes time. Hmm. I love also, you know, obviously these tiny little shoals of fish and how you've positioned them to catch the light as well. I mean, that looks quite tricky to me. Yeah. I, I have lots of uh, lots of papers, you know, when I have leftover acrylic paint, I would I would um, wipe it into the white paper and then print over it, perhaps, you know, just having I have a lot of textured paper in my drawer and I choose it later on. Uh, you know, if I'm doing something like this, I already have the paper. I just find the right color and uh, yeah, mm. that's good. So I've got. Yeah, yeah. Can I just ask if there's something like this, which just looks like so many of those wonderful, um, you know, underwater Jack Costo kind of films that we might have seen. Do you use references at all or is it purely from your imagination? If I if I paint a whale, I will I will probably look how she looks. And then when you look at the pictures of whales, you probably find lots of beautiful pictures which can inspire you in certain way mm -hmm. or if you want it or not they will definitely be buried somewhere in your brain mm -hmm. but otherwise I I prefer to draw and paint from my imagination first I quite whenever I draw animal I feel I, I draw it first the way how I remember the animal and only then I would check how far I am from my memory because in my memory it's already simplified if you know what i mean i already kind of my brain already um picked what is important and what's not and mm -hmm. uh, then you look uh, you know then you look at the original uh, that, uh, then you look at the image of the animal and you realize you know how the feet of the bird really are or if you draw a chameleon then you realize that you know, how his fingers are he's got two fingers inside in the front legs, but two fingers outside in the back or the way around. So mm -hmm. he's got, you know, there are very interesting details. And yeah. uh, although it doesn't need to be realistic, you still want these things get yeah. right. Because children are not stupid. They know these things. They they are very quick to correct you if you get something wrong. So mm -hmm. yeah. I love that idea of your brain sort of picking out the important things and being yeah. a repository for um you know the imagination there unlike you know maybe another approach which would rely quite heavily on sketchbooks which I know you don't carry with you I don't know how do you know that but it's true I, I've got I've got you the, told me that's how I know that <laughs> yeah yeah no I, I've got I've got little sketchbooks um, in my studios which I fill up with drawings uh, little uh, ideas um yeah, so they are A6 sketchbooks, but I have them in the in the in the studio. And I, whenever I travel, and I get an idea, I just get a piece of paper. I usually have A4 paper somewhere, but I don't have a specific a sketchbook like mm -hmm. many other artists have. No, mm -hmm. and uh, I have a little sketchbook to write ideas. But then when I'm developing the idea, then I you do it on the, on the A4 papers, which, which uh, yeah, I always have to ask somebody to give me one. Yeah. Let's have a look at some more. <laughs> OK. Um, so this is this is some of the collages. Uh, yeah, the papers. Yeah, you can see the papers with textures uh, I would use. And uh, I was also looking um, at the characters of Tom and Maud. Now, people talk about cats, but I must say, I don't know if they are cats because as somebody pointed out, they don't have tails <laughs> and, they, and they don't. And actually, this is the very first sketches of Tom and Maud. And 
I honestly have no idea why I did them this way. But at the same time, as I was writing the story, I just thought I can't see reason why I should change it. I, I, I like them. And if people think they are cats, that I'm quite happy with it. So here they are. Uh, one of them is Tom and the other one is Maud. And uh, I was, here is some, one of the unused uh, sketch or, uh, you know, how they are playing together. And I just find the shape, you know, again, the shape and the color allow me to play with the characters. They can do whatever I want them to do. They got legs and they got arms. They, they are quite, they look a little bit clumsy. They look like children a bit. And uh, I thought that will work. One of them is black, one of them is white, which again, it's a great advantage if you want to have very colorful background because you can fit it with any colors. Mm -hmm. These are the sketches, um, as I mentioned before, because I use collage uh, to keep the continuity of the characters through the picture book. I would draw them first and then cut them out and keep them on the side. And when I have all the characters from whole book, then I will start painting the backgrounds because this way I keep the, this way I, I, I keep the, continuity in the book. So again, here is uh, here is the black and white sketch. This is how I wanted, I mentioned the bird sitting mm. on the head of one of the, uh, uh, you know, on the, on the hand of Tom. And this is the final picture again. Yeah, amazing. Before. Here again, here is a, how I want it. Can I just again. stop you on this yeah, one sure. for a moment? Uh, because the other animals, apart from Tom and Mott, have a different quality to them. They're not realistic, but they feel closer to um, a naturalistic impression yeah. of that animal. Yes. Well, I think what you're just saying, it's, 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 it's clearly visible on this uh, spread that uh, they are more, more realistic than, than the main characters, I suppose. And uh, if I stop sharing, uh, this is this is one of the pictures. Mm. This is the same picture, but actually I realized that here I am too realistic. Oh. So this is not the picture which is in the book. Right. And why? So if you can memorize this one, mm -hmm. and then then I will I will share the screen again. Okay, so this is a little bit less realistic, if you know what I mean. Mm. So, why, did, why didn't you like the, because this looks so right to me, what you're showing now. Yeah. What was it that made you think that's that's not right? Perhaps, perhaps, um, perhaps uh, for the reason, as you said, perhaps they were too realistic. Suddenly, I thought I'm getting a little bit away from, uh, um, suddenly I started to think more about the child who will see the book and wanted to, um, to fit the characters into into this kind of world of imagination, maybe associated more with the toys. Because I don't know if you have the book, if you you will realize that actually the elephant, the tiger, they all appear in the other pictures. They are like a toy somewhere in the story. They're lying around, mm -hmm. and um, that's perhaps why I wanted. Uh, why I changed this image yeah I was quite interested in your elephant because you've done a book about an elephant before mm. and I was so um captivated by the texture of the elephant's skin that feels really elephanty <laughs> I haven't got a better word for it so I'm going to use elephanty and yeah. then I went to have a look at elephant again and use it it's quite different to your elephant in that book Yes. No, I just simply didn't want to uh, repeat myself. Um, the texture in the book Elephant, it's just a pencil scribble, isn't mm. it? Yeah. And, uh, which I I really like, because especially when I, uh, I... I like the Elephant book anyway, but uh, when I read it to children and if I do some workshop with children, they love it. They, 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 they find it really um, fascinating that you can scribble nonsense and actually then you add a shape of Elephant and you can cut it out. And you have the elephant. They 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 think it's actually uh, quite interesting. And 
and I, I, I just didn't want to repeat myself. And uh, I thought, why, why don't try something new? And I think it quite it works. <laughs> so, mm. yeah, yeah. So, what have you scratched something away here, or is it like a wax resist? Or oh, this is purely, um, I think, um, polystyrene sheet, mm -hmm. and then I painted the color a little bit, a little bit of color in the shape of this elephant, and I printed over it. So that's mm -hmm. all it is, really. Just, just, just a little bit of the silhouette of the elephant, and then printed um, from the polystyrene sheet over it. Mm, and, uh, you know just adding the eye and uh, and, and eye glue in the ta the task and that's it yeah i love the sense of humor yeah. that the elephant is standing on the hand of the yeah, character yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 again you know it's the imagi imagination it's it's the kind of everything it's possible mm. so so yeah. yeah fabulous have we got <laughs> some more Yes, uh, well, I just wanted to show you how uh, how uh, this is this uh, before I start painting. This is what I do. I, I just kind of uh, have it one to one, just a pencil drawing, just to be sure the composition of the picture is right. I have the main characters already done. They are they are here and uh, uh, like this. I then paint the original. There was another thing I was thinking as I was preparing myself for today. Uh, I look at it and I remember we were with, with Janeta uh, discussing the, the the scale of the characters. And I just, I was, I, I now, you know, after two years, see, because it takes a long time to, to do the book and, um, you know, to wait until it's printed and appears in the shop. So, Looking at it, I know exactly what what was her worries and why she asked me about the size of the of the characters. At the time, there was no doubt to me that it makes sense. <laughs> I just simply I just simply like them being, you know, you don't know are they big, are they small, are they, you know, what are they really? And and I thought this is actually something I always liked about the book that it's you are your imagination can take you anywhere and mm -hmm. i was i was also remembering somebody was talking about john birmingham how he used to illustrate without any worries continuity of his characters in the book was no issue you know he would do a book mm -hmm. about the fox and the fox would be different on each picture but because it was a red fox nobody was even questioning it because it was obvious the book it's about the red fox and and i, I just thought Oh yeah, I know what, what he was going through. You know, I was, uh, I feel very comfortable with the characters as they are. I thought they were fun and enjoy it. And um, just adding to it by playing with the scale of things, mm -hmm. I thought it's again, you know, it's a, it's a kind of world of fiction. So let children to work it out. And also I remember when I was little, how I was fascinating with things which are big and small. Um, I don't know how to explain it, but it's sometimes maybe some of the people who are listening, they will remember when they were very little. They they were sometimes fascinated how, for example, the marble, how big it is. So some, or sometimes you're looking for something and you're looking for a marble and you know that it's huge and it must be somewhere, you know, and a week later you find it and you realize it's actually much smaller than you thought it was. Mm. And, and things like this, which happened, well, at least to me, quite often when I was little, I, I remember um, how how the scale of things uh, changes. And you sort of play with that in this book because it's a marble, but it's a planet, you know. And when you look at a marble close up and you really yeah. look inside, suddenly it feels much bigger. Yeah. You know those cod's eye marbles. Yeah. Um, yeah. So really fascinating. We were, we were talking yesterday with, uh, I hope my daughter wouldn't mind, but uh, we were talking with my nephew and um, my older daughter. And, and I remember one moment when she was very little, she was less than two, I think, or two. And she was playing with a Barbie, with uh, a new car, which we visited my mother-in-law, our neighbors lent us some toys. And one of them was a big Barbie car and Barbie in it. And my daughter would get so involved in the toy and I was watching her. And, and suddenly she tried to fit into the car. She opened the door of the car and tried to get in. 
And I was looking at her like, what is she doing? And she was really frustrated and, and not able to understand that she can't actually get into the car with the Barbie. And I thought it was so good how, how the child's mind, you know, how you get involved with the game, like mm -hmm. so much that suddenly you become the part of this world, of the other world. And no, it was, it was, yeah, we just talked about it yesterday. I just remember. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> so I'm looking here at, at, at you know, uh, the book that we've talked about, The uh, Best Friend for Bear, is obviously inspired by your forest environment. There are lots of outdoor la outdoors and landscapes uh, of all kinds. And here you're working a lot more with internal spaces. And I was really interested to see how you made it feel like a real space. And you gave us some background but it's very knocked back so that it doesn't distract from what's going on I think in the next slide you see that as well uh, yes uh, you mean this one yeah. Mm. yeah so it feels like a real space mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but it doesn't distract us from what's going on I think I, I, I probably talk about this uh, scale um, perhaps too much I somehow since since I the book was in print and I showed it to a couple of people, not a one person pointed it out, which which I think it's a good thing. Mm -hmm. You know, I I, I I pointed it out because, uh, because <laughs> yeah, I did. But but if you if you read through the story and you come to the page, I believe that many people just don't even blink. You know, mm -hmm. okay, here they mm -hmm. are, the best uh, birthday cake ever. Who knows how the best birthday cake in the world looks like? You know. So, so yeah. Have we? Ah, oh, and there we are. So, <laughs> I think what I'll do now is I'll just ask whether anybody would uh, like to ask uh, a question. So, I'm just going to hop over to the chat. Um, and if you'd like to put any questions that you have in the chat uh, for Petter, please do. Uh, just so that uh, I don't know if you can read this yourself, but um, there are people commenting on your wonderful phoenix-like character. Uh, you called it a chicken. Doesn't a phoenix sound so much grander? <laughs> um, um, Kate has said that, you know, she's reminded about the borrowers um, uh, with that fascination uh, to do with size. Um, OK, so, yes. Yeah, yes. coming up there. Uh, please do. If you've got any questions at all, I'm sure Peta would really love to answer them. So uh, I am checking the chat. I know it takes time for you to put your messages in there. Uh, but as I say, please feel free uh, to do that. Um, just while we're waiting for everybody to flood the chat with all of their questions, I wanted to ask you something. I asked this of nearly everybody. So uh, apologies um, for people that have heard me ask this very question before. I'm fascinated um, by painters and how they paint water. And I think it goes back to my dad taking me around an art gallery. Um, maybe we were looking at a Vermeer or something and he, he was pointing out how clever this was, you know, the painting of water. And I'd never thought about it before. So I always want to ask people, and you've got rain and water in this story. I'm always fascinated to ask people how they do it and why they do it in the way that they do. Well, I'm just like you, actually. I'm fascinated with people who can paint water. And I always love going to gallery and watching, you know, impressionists. And there is one amazing painter, Czech painter, who actually lived in France, uh, um, Kupka, František Kupka. He was brilliant painting water. Um, I'm always trying to kind of memorize how other people are doing it. Um, yeah, and uh, I don't think I... I'm I'm the greatest painter of water, but but yeah, no, it's uh, it's it's fascinating how some people master it. Um, I don't. Can we have a look that. at those pages in the book, the rainy pages? Okay, let me let me see the rainy picture. Uh, would it be just a second? Oh, now I lost you. I, oh, okay. So. Mm. 
it's it's amazing isn't it because there are endless ways of doing this and yet we recognize all of them as uh -huh. water so tell me about the quality of water that you're sort of capturing with your oh, pictures. In, the, in this case what i did um i think for the sometimes to be honest because i use so many different materials sometimes mm. i have to think very hard how i did that um, it's got a great advantage from sometimes when I'm doing an uh, illustration, I, I look for inspiration. Suddenly I think, oh, I did something similar in another book. And I look through the book and I look at the picture and I have no idea how I did that. But in this case, I use um, masking fluid, which is a, it's, it's, it's a, I think must be based on PVA. It's like if you imagine PVA glue uh, or something. So you, so I painted a very light blue on the watercolor, and then I use this masking fluid for the raindrops and the circles on the surface of the water. Mm. And then you paint over it. Everything else is painted over it. And when the picture dries, you peel it off. And wow. you end up with these, uh, with these uh, lines. It doesn't work 100%, so sometimes you have to add a little bit of white acrylic or and you can also, you can very gently go with another watercolor over it. So you can, uh, you know, add a tone to these uh, raindrops and stuff like that. But the, the masking fluid, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good... Uh, a good it's lovely. And, and what's interesting is when you watch children draw rain mm. or water, they always do the, they do lines, don't they? I mean, most yeah. children that I've seen, when they paint rain, they paint lines. That's yeah. how they do it. Yeah, to be, to be, um, yeah, exactly. I mean, um, there is lots of people who can paint rain. Lots of illustrators who can paint rain really, really beautifully. I, yeah, so mm. it's something I'm still. And learning. then you decided, perhaps afterwards, to put these splashes on. Of the. Yeah, the the splashes. Yes, you just have to cover the bits you don't want to be splashed. And then I just uh, put in my my uh, paint brush into the paint, and I just flick it uh, with a finger. Mm. And it <laughs> You're just playing all the time, aren't you? I'm having great time. Absolutely, you are. <laughs> <laughs> I want yeah. to be in your art class. I can tell you. <laughs> so um, there's a question here. Um, do your picture books always start with character? Should we take the screen off and we can see what the, the questions are? Mm -hmm. Do your picture books always start with a character? Yes, uh, yes, pretty much so. Um, I always, I, I think the character comes first. There would be maybe a couple of books where I would think about subject before I think about a character. You know, but mainly, mainly board books, because when I do board books, I always think what the little children would be interested about, and the the uh, the amount of subjects the little child would be interested about. It's limited, obviously, because of the you know uh, age of the child. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. as I keep saying, children are not stupid, but they have less experience than we have. So. So, you know, I have to think it has to be about size, about um, color or about something like that. So the subjects for the very little children would go first. Mm. But for the picture books, I think uh, it would be the character. Yeah. For those people who haven't seen Petter's board books, I would encourage you to go and look at them um, because a good board book is quite difficult to produce and we all know that sometimes just well-known stories get put into board books and that in my opinion doesn't really work you have to know what you're doing and here we have somebody who is the absolute master of creating board books that really work for very young children so if you don't know them I'm going to urge you to go out and, and have a look um there's a question here uh, from Lisa. She wants to say thank you, first of all, and she saw you at the Hay Festival. Um, and it's just thank you. It's late and it's bedtime. She's going to, the, her little daughter's going to bed. I thought it was going to be a question, but really it's just a huge thank you to you. 
And maybe that is a good point um, at which to, if there are no more questions that are coming uh, into the chat, maybe that is a good time for us all to say thank you to you. You know, thank you for letting us into your world. Um, I think it's a fantastic world. I want to get all my paints out, my inks out, whatever I can find around me, I want to get it out and start playing. Um, and I hope, you know, people go out and purchase a copy of The Perfect Present. You can certainly get it from our website, which is bestbooksforschools.com or from your local uh, independent bookseller um, or wherever else you get your books from and from the libraries. Uh, but whatever you do, make sure you get hold of a copy and have a really good read and share it with uh, children too. Can't wait to see their responses. Uh, to the story so thank you so much for joining us uh, it's been a pleasure thank you thank you very much thank you Nikki it's lovely talking to you always have great uh, questions and you make me think a lot so I uh, it was very inspiring talking to you and thank you very much to everybody who joined us and thank yeah. you to Otterberry Books for publishing inspirational children's books uh, and doing it so well and with such love and such care so um, good night to everybody and uh, hope to see you all again soon. And um, Petra, hopefully face to face next time. <laughs> Looking forward to it. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye.